From a distance, the Cascade Range has always projected an image of serenity. Snow-draped peaks, alpine meadows, and pristine lakes reflecting the silhouettes of mountains that seem eternal. Yet those who study these landscapes know the stillness can be deceptive. Beneath the towering summits of the Pacific Northwest lies an active and complex geological system that has shaped the region for millions of years. In recent months, a quiet but measurable stirring has unsettled scientists, suggesting that some of these dormant giants may be edging toward renewed activity. Researchers from the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, have been watching the data closely. A series of subtle but unusual tremors have rippled through sections of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, prompting questions about what might be happening deep underground. To the casual observer, these movements barely register. To volcanologists, however, they are potential threads in a much larger and more urgent story, one that stretches across centuries of catastrophic eruptions and uneasy quiet. The Cascade Arc, stretching for more than 700 miles from British Columbia down into Northern California, is a defining feature of the Pacific Ring of Fire, the most volcanically active belt on the planet. Its peaks, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount Shasta, among others, were forged by the ongoing subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate beneath the North American Plate, a collision that has built and reshaped the landscape countless times. Each mountain represents the visible tip of a complex magmatic system hidden beneath the surface, one capable of producing events that can transform the region overnight. While many visitors come for the scenic grandeur, scientists see something else, the restless engines of active volcanoes. Historical records and geological evidence show that the Cascades have erupted repeatedly over the last several thousand years. Some of these events, such as the cataclysmic 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens, have caused widespread destruction and loss of life. Even in quieter decades, the subterranean forces persist, sometimes revealing themselves in swarms of small earthquakes, unexpected ground swelling, or sudden releases of volcanic gases. One of the most closely studied reminders of volcanic volatility came not in 1980, but in the fall of 2004. After more than two decades of relative calm, Mount St. Helens suddenly produced a swarm of earthquakes beginning on September 23 of that year. The activity escalated within days. It revealed that lava could ascend undetected until it was already close to erupting, an unsettling reminder that even the most monitored volcano in the United States could surprise the experts. For volcanologists, the event was not merely a spectacle, but a challenge to existing models of how and when eruptions occur. That challenge extends far beyond Mount St. Helens. In central Oregon, some 25 miles west of Bend, the Three Sisters Volcanic Center has been the focus of growing attention. Since 1998, the ground near South Sister has been rising by roughly 1.5 inches per year, a steady and measurable deformation detected through satellite-based radar interferometry and confirmed by GPS surveys. Geologist Dan Zurison, part of the USGS team monitoring the area, describes the phenomenon as a bullseye pattern of uplift visible in satellite data most likely caused by magma pooling roughly four miles beneath the surface. This slow inflation is not something a hiker could notice by sight alone. Over eight inches of uplift in more than two decades barely registers to the naked eye. But to scientists, it's a signal worth investigating. Uplift of this kind can be a precursor to volcanic activity, though it does not always result in an eruption. Zurison and his colleagues stressed that the phenomenon could represent a normal, recurring process in the long-term volcanic cycle of the Cascades. Equally possible is that it is the early stage of something larger. Deploying monitoring equipment in the remote, rugged terrain is physically demanding work. Mike Lasowski, who specializes in GPS system placement, has trekked repeatedly into the wilderness to position instruments both near the uplifted zone and farther away to map its boundaries. The goal is to build a precise three-dimensional picture of the deformation, down to thousandths of an inch. Past eruptions in the region illustrate the unpredictability of volcanic timelines. Alaska's Redoubt volcano erupted in 1989 after only a day of seismic buildup. By contrast, the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption followed two months of escalating unrest. In the case of the Three Sisters uplift, scientists cannot yet place it confidently on the spectrum between immediate, distant danger. Despite the uncertainties, Oregon's volcanic past speaks to its potential. The Three Sisters region has produced more lava than any other segment of the Cascades, often through widely scattered vents rather than single, centralized peaks. 
Its history includes basaltic flows, expl precise tipping point between subterranean unrest and surface eruption is often determined in hours or days, not months or years. Mount St. Helens serves as the most vivid case study of that difficulty. Prior to 1980, the volcano had been dormant for 123 years. The warning signs that spring, earthquake swarms, visible bulging of the north flank were unmistakable in hindsight, but unprecedented in local experience. When the eruption finally came on May 18, the resulting landslide and explosion devastated over 200 square miles, killed 57 people, and blanketed the region in ash. The catastrophe accelerated public demand for advanced monitoring systems and brought new urgency to understanding all the volcanoes in the arc, not just the most famous one. In the decades since, Mount St. Helens has transformed into a living laboratory. High-resolution digital elevation models track the slow growth of new magma domes within the crater. Thermal imaging captures the intense heat of fresh lava, exceeding 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 538 degrees Celsius, as it oozes and piles into formations nearly half a mile wide and close to 1,000 feet tall. Remarkably, if the current pace of dome growth continued uninterrupted, the volcano could regain its pre-1980 height in just half a century, a geological blink of an eye. This modern lava is unlike the material that fueled the 1980 blast. It contains fewer volcanic gases, is slightly cooler, and is far more crystalline and viscous. Instead of erupting directly upward, it emerges at an angle, apparently diverted under the older dome. This unusual extrusion offers researchers a rare opportunity to observe slow, steady magma output in real time. To do so safely, scientists rely on remote tools such as spiders, rugged, multi-legged monitoring stations airlifted into hazardous zones. Equipped with GPS receivers, seismic sensors, and telemetry systems, these devices transmit data continuously, enduring heat, ash, and the occasional damage from rock falls or steam bursts. The conditions inside the crater are so extreme that equipment often returns melted, warped, or shattered. Does the data they collect have transformed Mount St. Helens into one of the most comprehensively monitored volcanoes on Earth? Even so, there are hazards that technology can only partially mitigate. Within the crater, a 600-foot-thick glacier sits alongside the magma dome, its ice slowly melting from the contact heat. Pools of meltwater sometimes form at the base of the ice, and if rapidly heated by magma, could produce violent steam explosion. The broader challenge remains one of foresight. Identifying which Cascade volcano is most likely to erupt within the next decade could inform everything from scientific deployments to land use planning, perhaps discouraging development in high-risk valleys. Yet despite all the advances in remote sensing and seismic detection, the inner workings of these volcanoes remain partly hidden, their timelines inscrutable. For now, the story is one of vigilance without certainty. The uplift at the Three Sisters persists. Mount St. Helens continues to exude fresh lava, and across the arc, from Mount Hood to Mount Rainier, the mountains that define the Pacific Northwest horizon stand as both symbols of beauty and reminders of the forces still shaping them. While technology has vastly improved since the early days of volcanology, even the most wired volcano in the world can still surprise its observers. The resurgence of Mount St. Helens in 2004 demonstrated that, despite decades of progress, a volcano can still awaken with little warning. For scientists, that eruption underscored the need for constant vigilance, not only for St. Helens, but for every other peak along the Cascade Arc. Mount Rainier, with its towering ice fields and proximity to major population centers, remains a particular focus of concern. The hazards there are not limited to lava and ash. Lahars, fast-moving volcanic mud flows, pose a serious risk to communities downstream. An eruption is not even necessary to trigger them. A flank collapse or sudden melting of glacial even ribas could send walls of debris surging through river valleys with catastrophic consequences. Similar worries extend to Mount Hood, Mount Jefferson, and several less famous but no less active volcanic centers. One of the main challenges for scientists is that many of these volcanoes have not erupted in living memory, leaving only fragmentary records of their behavior. Before 1980, for instance, the true potential of Mount St. Helens was largely underestimated, in part because its last major eruption had occurred in the mid-19th century. It took the devastation of May 18 to reveal just how violently it could unleash its stored energy. The hope now is that ongoing monitoring across the Cascades will prevent a repeat of that surprise. The reality, however, is that response capacity depends heavily on preparation. If instruments are not already installed and calibrated before unrest begins, it becomes much harder, and often more dangerous, 
to gather the data needed for accurate forecasts. This is why scientists have pushed for- In the case of the Three Sisters uplift, this persistence has paid off. The deformation has been tracked consistently for more than two decades, offering an unprecedented long-term view of a process that may be common in volcanic systems, yet rarely observed in real time. Whether the uplift culminates in an eruption or subsides quietly, the data will help refine models of magma movement beneath continental arcs. Even if no eruption follows, scientists will gain valuable insight into the cycles of inflation and deflation that shape a volcano's long-term evolution. But this meticulous observation is not purely academic. The Pacific Northwest is home to millions of people, many living within range of volcanic hazards. Understanding the behavior of the Cascades is as much about public safety as it is about scientific curiosity. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 darkened skies hundreds of miles away, disrupted air travel, and buried roads and rivers under thick layers of ash. A similar event today could paralyze infrastructure across the region, with economic impacts extending far beyond the immediate blast zone. To maintain round-the-clock awareness, scientists at observatories stay linked to their volcanoes through an array of remote systems. Instruments like the spiders on St. Helens relay seismic tremors, ground tilt measurements, and gas emissions in near real time. The volume of incoming data can be overwhelming, but it allows rapid assessment when an alarm sounds, whether in the middle of the day or in the pre-dawn hours of a winter storm. This constant stream of information gives researchers the ability to reassure the public when activity is minor, or to escalate warnings if the signs point toward escalation. Even so, the complexity of volcanic systems means that absolute certainty remains elusive. Magma can rise without erupting, stall at depth for decades, or change course entirely. The triggers that transform steady uplift into explosive release are still poorly understood. In some cases, a volcano can remain largely unchanged for generations, then enter a phase of intense unrest that culminates in an eruption within days. This variability is part of what makes volcanic prediction so challenging, and why scientists resist making definitive statements without robust evidence. As the work continues, the Cascades themselves stand as both subjects and teachers. Mount St. Helens, with its growing dome and ice-rimmed crater, offers a rare chance to witness post-eruption recovery in real time. The Three Sisters uplift represents a slower, quieter process whose outcome is still chapters remain unwritten. For those who live in the Pacific Northwest, the message is one of informed respect. The mountains that dominate the skyline are more than scenic backdrops. They are active parts of a dynamic Earth system. While scientists cannot yet predict every movement, they can provide critical warnings and insights that save lives and reduce damage when the next eruption inevitably comes. The balance between beauty and danger has always defined the Cascades. Their snow-capped summits feed rivers, nourish forests, and attract travelers from around the world. Yet they are also reminders that the Earth's surface is in constant flux, shaped by forces that lie far beneath our feet. Whether the recent signs of activity represent the start of a new eruptive cycle, or simply another chapter in the region's restless history, the lesson is the same. Vigilance is not optional, it is essential. In the coming years, the combination of improved technology, long-term observation, and accumulated experience may bring scientists closer to answering the fundamental questions that have persisted for centuries. What truly triggers an eruption? How much warning can we expect? And how do these processes fit into the broader rhythms of our planet's evolution? Until those answers are clear, the work will go on, day and night, in labs, observatories, and the wild backcountry of the Pacific Northwest. And so the story of the Cascade volcanoes remains unfinished. Beneath the calm slopes and glacier-lined ridges, the ground is alive with unseen movement, slow but unstoppable. Each tremor, each fraction of an inch of uplift, is a reminder that these mountains are not monuments to the past, but participants in an ongoing drama that has shaped the continent for millions of years and will continue to do so long after the present generation is gone. For those captivated by that story, the best thing to do is stay informed, stay prepared, and keep an eye on the mountains. The next chapter may be closer than anyone expects. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the hidden forces shaping the Pacific Northwest, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of Earth's most fascinating geological phenomena. Stay curious, stay safe, 
and keep watching the horizon, because the story of the Cascades is still being written.